I'm joined today by Patrick Nelson, who's head of international real estate at WeWork, which before the pandemic was the largest occupier of office space in London, uh, apart from the government. Uh, Patrick, I mean, it must have been a tough year for you, like everybody else, but uh, have things changed over the uh, year since the start of COVID-19, or are you still London's largest occupier? Yeah, I think I think we are still London's largest private occupier. You're right after the government. Um, to your point, we've had a certainly a, a tumultuous, call it, um, I think, 15 months. Uh, and I think it, it's worth just looking all the way back to 2019. You know, we had at the end of that, in Q3-19, Obviously, as a business, we went through a, a fairly uh, enormous change with the failed IPO. And the reason I touch back to that is that was actually a moment where we were forced, and I think in a very positive way, to look at ourselves as a business and to understand, you know, what did we have and what did we have to do? And, you know, when we look at it, what we, what we had and still have was an excellent global portfolio, buildings, uh, almost always in, in key cities in the world, in central business districts, um, and, and a lot of high quality assets. Uh, we also had a great membership base, which was um, you know all different types of businesses, but we had seen a massive continued increase in enterprise and, uh, and large business as a, as a percentage of our global portfolio. Um, and we also had you know a great product, great design, great hospitality, and it was that merging of sort of you know what what you could offer if you actually touched with with the uh, with the users of office space um, and then what we had to do was uh, really refocus make sure that we were a business that was really focused on on what we did well which is providing flexible office space um, and and the hospitality and design element of that uh, we needed to make sure that we got a lot more conscientious about our costs as a business and we divested a lot of non-core investments um, and it allowed us to really focus on, you know, what, what it is that we do and love, which is providing, you know, great, great office space and on flexible conditions with designing hospitality. Uh, so that, that's what it came back to. And fortuitously, at the beginning of 2020, after that, we had raised a lot of money and um, that allowed us to go into COVID, obviously a challenging time for all flex operators, but allowed us to go into uh, COVID with a very, very strong balance sheet, a lot of cash. Um, so the ability, one, to restructure the business in a really thoughtful and, and applied manner, um, and also to, you know, make sure that we could continue to operate our centers, do what was right for our members, and, you know, whether the, the unusualness of COVID. So, I mean, we, we, we were, grew so large and, and, and so fast because it actually understood the changing nature of work, and you're clearly at the moment thinking hard about what post-pandemic work will be like and I, I see on the website you know you've done a lot of research about attitudes to home working what what did your research find what well, to your to your point correctly we've done you know we have over 600,000 members around the world and a lot of some very significant enterprise customers we're always talking to them where the benefactors of always having feedback but re very regular uh, feedback which we can apply in, into our business operation. I think, you know, this, th there's some very short term consequences of COVID, but I think the interesting trends which come out of that are a much greater requirement for flexibility. And, I, and looking into that a little bit, there's been some interesting developments. You know, flexibility, especially in, in our sector, in the work sector, used to be very much focused on sort of flexibility of uh, space take and flexibility of, of lease term. And I think these, the value of those two things increases in an uncertain market. And we've seen a lot of that feedback with our enterprise members. And I think, you know, the conversation versus two years ago, which used to be like, okay, we should look at some flex. Now it's very much what percentage of our portfolio should we be using as, as sort of a flexible provider and, you know, some 10, and some they're saying the whole thing we should outsource, but the, the conversation has certainly shifted and kind of the acceptance of that. And I think some of the drivers is a greater trust between employer and employee because everybody was forced to do this working from home experiment. And I, I think people have sort of understood, you know, there's, there's some benefits of working from home, but really I think unintended consequence, it's highlighted the importance of, of the office. Um, but what I think has been interesting about the acceleration of, of these kind of trends by COVID is that the, the type of flexibility that companies now have to get involved in thinking about has extended beyond that pretty 
a basic level of kind of space and term. And it's extended to a flexibility of, uh, you know, a geographical flexibility and also an employee work lifestyle flexibility. You know, if people want to work at slightly different hours, how do we accommodate? And if people, I think one of the big benefits of working from home is not having the commute. And so how do you alleviate that? How do you make sure that, you know, instead of having one location, which is your sole office location, how do you make sure that you can have a geographical flexibility that suits all your employees, makes them more productive, has them happier and helps with retention, you know, but ultimately gets you as a business operator, a happier, more productive workforce. And so for us, we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of development and questions from enterprise customers that say, okay, how do we, we work, we have 60 open WeWork buildings just in London. How do we make sure that we're benefiting from having a, a headquarters in a WeWork, but then also access and usage of the different sites? And that, that's something that we offer and, you know, we, we've really given additional focus to during COVID as an opportunity. So how, how does that actually change what you do? I mean, clearly sort of changes that you have to do at the moment is meeting uh, greater concerns about health and, and healthy offices. But, uh, so does, does your, your model still hold good or, or do you see uh, that you might need to change it as we come out of the pandemic? Well, to your point about health, I think we've, uh, you know, it's important that you make sure that your places of work are COVID compliant, not only that you actually deliver that in a really thoughtful manner, but also that people are aware of it, they're comfortable with it, and they have assurance that, that you're doing the right thing. Uh, in fact, just very recently, um, we work health and safety just got, uh, operations team just got awarded the global certificate of conformity for COVID. Um, we have a global platform. So I think we were the benefactor of understanding how to, to respond to this really early as it started around the world in our presence in portfolio in Asia. And, uh, and then we, we made sure that we implemented all of our kind of, uh, safety measures and communicated them effectively to members. And again, we've had feedback and we've improved how we do that, but, but we know that we're holding really the highest standard, I think, of anybody in office space. But again, back to this concept of COVID being an accelerator, it hasn't changed the fundamental principle that given the choice, people always want to work in an office environment that facilitates, you know, productivity and happiness. And that, I think, is a combination of many, many different things. It's partly a combination of design, layout of space. For me, it's something I always think about a lot, which I find very useful, is the optionality that working in a WeWork office gives you. If you want to work in an office or an open area with music or a conference room, or a private phone booth, whatever it might be. I find that very energizing and I know that it improves my productivity and, and happiness at work. So all of these things have existed. They're not trends that have just suddenly popped up, but I think the attention that is being given you know, to the importance of how people can use the office space and, and what they should be getting out of the office space, there's been greater attention placed on that. And I think that that's something truthfully which, plays very nicely into what we provide because it does say, we know that people are saying, okay, I want somewhere that's thoughtful and productive, allows for teams to interact and for people to have creative ideas, uh, to be inspired, to be to, to really kind of question, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go in and commute because I see all the benefits to it. And this is something which we've always been, uh, we've always been working to on, on a, you know, throughout the whole history of WeWork. Um, so again, I think the change is not really that it's created new desires, it's just highlighted some of them. As head of real estate, are you looking more favourably on outer London locations or do you maintain faith in the benefits of the centre of cities and uh, of agglomeration? I personally always have loved cities and I think that there's something very exciting about the energy and, and heart of cities and I think that they, I believe that they will return and come back. You, you had alluded to some of the studies that we do. There's, there's two, I think, interesting, and there's a number of interesting insights, but two interesting insights that I like. The first very, very clear one is that at the beginning of the pandemic, some people say, great, this work from home experiment is interesting. In every single dimension, we see that that excitement of working from home is decreasing. It, it's waning, people are saying, I really wanna come back to the office. I might think maybe I wanna go back three, four, maybe five days a week. 
but uh, the, the desire to go back to the office and to be part of that in the city environment, I think it's, it's really clear cut. And then the other thing is um, that's the, the demographic with that it might applies to most obviously is the younger people. People under the age of 35 are the ones who are most hungry to get back to the office, to the city. You know, they want the social aspect to it. They want the mentorship. Uh, they want the in-person action and, and activity. And I think that that's both of those things are really going to drive you know people coming back to cities in a really positive way. What we're doing now as as a business, again, because we have the day to day uh, continuous feedback from our members, we're in a very fortunate position that we have great uh, visibility and understanding and transparency with our members, and we really understand where demand is coming from, and we're set up to respond very quickly to that. So in conversations with our members, when they say to us, we're really excited about having a location in a slightly different part of town, that's great. That's something that we'd look at. We'd look at the longevity of it and we'd look to, to find a solution and accommodate. I still do personally believe in CBD, central cities. I think London is a, a fantastic city and you know really one of the greatest cities in the whole world. And I don't think that's changed. Um, I think, again, one of these sort of unintended consequences of people wanting to come back to the office being more, having more clarity about what it is that they want and, and pushing for it and asking for it. I think they have a similar uh, attitude towards cities and the exciting parts of cities. I think, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I think that's certainly true um, for, for London and the city of London. Great. Patrick Nelson, thank you very much for your insights and look forward to seeing how things develop in the office market over the next uh, couple of years as a result of the pandemic. But uh, thank you very much for your thoughts. Great. Thanks a lot, Peter.